Mercy! Wait, Cloud. <laughs> Uh, a bit more, more to maybe. the left. The left. Wait. Hurry it up. Fix those <laughs> lights. Excuse me, sir. Your tie. Quickly now. Quickly. <clears throat> That's it. That's the smell. This place reeks of Mako. Looks like we made it. Layout's the same as Reactor 1. Yeah. We're near Mako storage. Let's move. We finally made it into the Mako reactor. Now, this is going to be a long mission, so I'm going to end up breaking it up into two episodes, although I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to split it up yet. I'm not seeing a way down. Here, maybe? Well, now, that could work. I'm next. <laughs> kind of scary, huh? It's all in the mind. Hmm? Hey, check it out. They stick this big boy on us? We'd be screwed six ways from Sunday. Mechanized units like these were designed to take out giant monsters. Probably a new prototype. If they do decide to deploy it, then our best bet would be to run like hell. Oof. Then let's hope he sleeps through the explosion. That is, of course, the Airbuster, the boss, uh, spoiler alert, but the boss that you fight while trying to escape this reactor. Another one of the enemies that are carried over from the original game. Where is everybody? You mean Shinra? <laughs> Got spooked and cleared out, is my guess. It's pretty obvious that Shinra is up to something. The fact that they're even... Well, they blew up the first reactor themselves. And they're watching Avalanche attack this one. They're, they've got the security cameras there. Shinra's... The President Shinra's sitting at his desk watching this entire thing go down. They seem to have removed all the guards from the reactor so it's like yeah just come on in and blow the damn thing up they're up to something not only that our characters are so damn stupid that they don't even wear masks or anything like this aside from the fact that they are the three most identifiable people in the damn world trying to attack this damn power plant they're not wearing masks nothing it's spoiler alert but it's no damn wonder they got caught I mean, come on now. Now, this wasn't quite something that carried over from the original game. The closest thing that I can think of in relation to the original game was the fact that Shinra didn't seem to put a lot of effort into stopping the reactors from being blown up. In the original game, it was in fact Avalanche's bombs that blew the damn place up. And, well, okay, the first reactor, they came in out of nowhere and blew the damn place up. The second reactor... Shinra knew that they were coming and still didn't stop them. And I always thought it was strange that they, that Shinra tried to intercept them as they left the power plant with the Airbuster, not while they were attacking, well, not while they were going in. But I guess they're giving a reason here. Well, well, what we got here? I can deal with those things. I'm starting to wonder about the character Biggs. Now, we saw Biggs right at the end of the previous episode, right before we actually got into the reactor. I'm starting to wonder about him because we have the characters of Wedge and Jesse now. They put a lot of effort into adding more characterization to Jesse. They have a last name for her. They have a home. They have a family for her. They have a lot of uh, backstory about her motivation for joining Avalanche. Now, uh, Wedge didn't quite get the same level of treatment, although they did give him a little bit more of a characterization, even if it oftentimes just ended up with being, oh yeah, Wedge is a fat guy. But they gave a little bit more attention to that, to that little, that big fella. 
to give him some personality, even if we don't really understand much about his motivations or anything like that. His, uh, his cats, all that kind of thing. Biggs, on the other hand, seems to have avoided all of that extra characterization completely. Of course, he's got more lines of dialogue in this game, because, of course, he would have to. It's a much longer game. But I'm not really seeing much of a difference between the Biggs of the original game and the Biggs of this game. Biggs in the original game was really only just sort of a background character that existed in Avalanche, only to, spoiler alert, die in a little while. And that was pretty much it. He was a plot device. Somebody who was a part of Avalanche that would eventually die. And, you know, the characters have to move on from there. So why hasn't he seen any significant character development in this game? That's the question that I have. I think there must be something coming. Because, I mean, there has to be something coming. They're not going to leave his character completely completely simple completely flat like they did in the original game they have to do something with him even if it's not as significant as Jesse they have to do something we did see him at the beginning of this mission whereas Wedge and Jesse weren't part of this mission but it's not enough there has to be something greater spoiler alert again but Cloud is not going to make it out of this mission and return back to Sector 7. The airbuster is going to explode and he's going to fall down to the slums beneath. By the time he makes it back to Sector 7, it'll be when Shinra is planning on dropping the plate. And that'll be the point that Biggs dies. So, you know, I don't know how they're going to manage to add anything. Maybe, maybe they really are just going to let him be a nothing character so it was like this a little more chaotic ain't that right yeah that really should be a hint to all of you that this is the second reactor you bombed the other one two days ago and this one is less chaotic than the last bombing mission none of these people are particularly smart found a little bit harder in this game deciding which accessories I'd rather use. In the original game, armor upgrades, weapon upgrades, all that kind of stuff was a pretty straightforward process. What you find in newer is probably better than what you had before. But in this game, it seems to be a little bit more complicated. You never know quite what it is you're going to be stumbling across. Will this be better than the last one I had? Maybe. Maybe not. You actually have to check and you may carry around the same weapons and armor for a long period of time. And it doubly goes so with the weapons. Sephiroth. Soldiers. Mako. Shinra. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of all of this! <laughs> Soldier boy. Tifa. What? How much time we need? We got all the time in the world. This one comes with a remote detonator. Courtesy of Jesse. We withdraw to a safe distance. Then, kaboom! Safe distance? What? No such thing? <laughs> we get out the same way we got in. Let's double back. Of course, Cloud is having his flashbacks to the Nibelheim incident that did happen in the first game as well. 
Huh? What the? Where are you going? Weirdly perfect timing. <sighs> Wait a minute. Is someone watching us? Breaking news from Mako Reactor 5. Shinra has confirmed the reactor to be the target of the bomb threat issued by the terrorist group Avalanche. <laughs> Members of the group were observed entering the facility, and security is currently sweeping it for explosive devices. We now go live to the scene. I'm here in the Sector 5 Undercity. Having confirmed the terrorist target, you guys the Shinra Emergency Operation Center has issued an evacuation Residents are outraged that the tragedy of Mako Reactor 1 was only the no first attack bombings! in a campaign no of violence. President Shinra has issued a statement providing assurances that the terrorists will soon be brought to justice. And so, to a people beset by chaos and uncertainty, we will offer the finest comfort, bread, and service. The big boy. I give you Shinra's latest triumph of technology! The Air Buster, your executioner! Huh? <laughs> Engineering on the line. Currently, the Air Buster is only 60% operational. The estimates were optimistic. I'm on air! <laughs> to the imbecile in charge down there! You are here by order to seize those intruders and bring them to me! Come quietly or there'll be trouble! Making quite a show of it, aren't they? Now here's a question that I have. If they were planning on, and for some reason, the destruction of the Mako reactors is part of their overall plan, I don't think it's actually necessary to bring Avalanche in and actually have them blow up the reactor. Because look at it this way. The footage that they showed everybody was the footage from the first bombing mission on reactor number one. And I think it was actually a pretty smart move of them to have Cloud stay back. Because Cloud didn't walk through that fence, Cloud didn't get caught by that camera, and he's not being seen by the public, so Cloud will be able to wander around later in, like, Sector 5 and 6 and such. Without arousing too much suspicion, nobody saw him on the news. So then, you'll be able to play the game a little bit later, uh, with the side missions and all that kind of stuff, without it stretching credibility a little bit too much. My problem is, though, if they're using footage from the Sector 1 bombing mission, to say that, okay, people are attacking the Sector 5 reactor, then why the hell did they actually even need Avalanche to actually attack the damn place? They could just set a bomb off themselves. They could blow the reactor up themselves, just like they did with the Sector 1 reactor, and then issue this statement, press statement out to the public anyway doesn't make a lot of sense but then again it is a video game I really shouldn't be shouldn't be disassembling quite that much should I I like antagonists having conspiracies and all that kind of stuff some sort of a plot going on behind the scenes that you don't understand at the time but then is slowly revealed over time I love that kind of shit but one thing that I do suggest is that you don't make it too elaborate the more elaborate a concept is, the more elaborate a strategy, tactics, conspiracy plans, or whatever, the more likely your plan is actually going to fail because there are too many things going on that could screw your plan up. I guess the idea behind an elaborate plan is, oh, this person's a genius, look what they managed to put together. But the way I look at it and goes, no, you're actually pretty stupid 
because he made too many assumptions as to what would happen. Shut the hell up! ...and bring them to the command center right now! I don't believe it. We played right into Shinra's hands. Yeah, and that bullshit Attention, news is already peddling that false narrative. <sighs> Subdue the insurgents so and bring screwed. them to the command center immediately! No, 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 hell no! Listen, they want to turn this into a spectacle, but right I say now. let's give them one. Let's take down Shinra's big ass neck in front of everybody. Okay. Attention, all I'm security sold. forces. Subdue the insurgents and bring You'd think Shinra would actually broadcast the whole thing live? Just in case something didn't go the way that they wanted? <laughs> it is a video game, so I guess they will. Maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh here. Gotta see how this actually plays out before I start judging it. I mean, I do tend to jump to conclusions. And again, what the hell am I gonna... What the hell else am I gonna jump to? would make you a soldier. Ex-soldier. Once a soldier, always a soldier. Though not, alas, for very long. 